Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for uh, September 12th. 12th. Yeah, September 12th. Can I get a call to order for the meeting? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we do a roll call? Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Her Hebert? Here. Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Everybody have a chance to review the meeting minutes from our previous meeting, as well as the finding of facts. Is there any further comment that anyone would like to make at this time on either of those? No. I have one question. Sure. Uh, on the appeal 2643, um, findings number two, there wasn't a vote count there. Yes or no? I'm missing something. Uh, In the minutes? On the this one oh, right yeah. here. in all the decisions. Mm -hmm. All the other ones were fine. It's just this one. It may have been properly noted in the town record, but the packet art has yet. Yeah. I don't have my notes here, so I don't know what the vote count was. So do we want to just hold this one until next time? Or? Well, that's up to the chair. Does anybody recall what the... Just, did, the anyone, did anyone vote no on number two on, on 2643? Because everything else was unanimous. As I believe. I believe that one was too. Yeah, I don't recall voting no on this one, so. 26 I don't remember anyone saying no on it. So, if, what's this one? Five yeas. Okay. It's only five yeas, right? That was for the final vote. This is an individual criteria. I believe it was five yeas for the individual criteria as well. Okay. I'll put that in there. Thank you. Any other questions or additions to add? Let's take the minutes first and then do the appeals, okay? So we yep. stay in the room. Going down there. Yep. All, all in favor of approving the minutes or actually a motion to approve the minutes? Move to okay. approve. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Let's go down through the appeals. Move approval of appeal number 2641 as written. Second. All in favor? Chairman's. You can you can take each one of them. Yeah. Okay. So that was 21. Uh, 2641. Okay. I'll move to approve appeal number 2642. Second. All in favor? Chairman's. Move to approve appeal number 2643. As amended by the... Whatever Senate. it is. Yes. I'll second that. All in favor? Chairman. Appeal number 2644. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous.
Next, going to the appeals. Appeal number 2645, a special exception permit application by Mary Gossich. Goshe. 40 Beach Ridge Road, Assessor's Map R042, Parcel 001G. Do we have a representative? Could you please take the podium. Let us know your name and what you're trying to do. Where are you from, actually? Um, my name is Mary Goshe, and I'm trying to increase my home daycare. Um, occupancy from six to eight babies. Okay. And you're at 40 Beach Ridge Road? Yes. Thank you. Just give us a brief synopsis. Is that just basically what you just said? That's all? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have six babies now, and according to the state of Maine, I can have up to eight. Um, and I have many families that need daycare, and I want to help them out by having two more babies. So on staff, do you have any staff comments? Or? Uh, no, this, as you recall, this appellant was before the board back in uh, March, and uh, she was approved for a home daycare at that time, uh, serving between four and six clients, infants. Um, and uh, since that time, she's realized an opportunity to serve more clients, and so she's back to the board because it's a change um, from what the uh, special exception home home occupation that was approved the last time. It also going up to the eight clients kicks her up into a different category according to Scarborough's definitions for home day family home daycare and group home daycare. So she's now in a group home daycare as opposed to a family home daycare, which only would allow the six clients. Now she wants to go to eight. Basically the same criteria uh, the only difference is that the um, home, uh, group home daycare has to be on a road with a classification higher than a residential collector, and this road does have that higher classification at her at her location, so she's good to go there. Um, so that's the, the change in clients plus that additional criteria for the approval is what brings her back to the board today. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought we asked that question when you first came before us, if you were thinking of going to any more children? Yeah, I originally said eight, and then I believe it was uh, Karen. Mm -hmm. um, she said, with the home occupancy, you can only have six. And so I was surprised, because um, it's different than what I had originally anticipated. Um, so I went with the six, and now I'm thinking of, now I'd like to go to eight babies. Does that trigger any more employees, by the way? We're going to obviously have to go home over the home occupation yeah, questions. Yeah, that's, that's, it depends on the, the age group of the clients, I believe. I'm sure Ms. Ms. Gaucher probably knows the rules better than I do as far as the, the Department of Health and Human Services criteria. Um, up to age two. Up to age two. But how many employees will it take to go to your eight clients? Two. Two. Mm -hmm. You and one other. Yes. Including yourself. Right. My understanding is the ratio is one adult per four infants. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with the home occupation, you can employ one additional person outside of the residence. So she goes to 12, and if Ms. Shoup's right, that she can't. kind she, of triggers she, her not to be able to do that. She can't do a home occupation at that point. Okay. Do you understand what we're getting at with that? Um, taking is, 12 babies? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I understand. So is eight going to be good? Yes. Okay. I mean, I want to make sure she can never go higher than eight at this location. Is that correct? Because not as, of not as a home occupation. Correct. Right, and to accommodate. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's go down through the questions. You can just answer as you had with your submitted information. I have my notes on my phone. That's why I'm looking at it. What's that? I have my notes on my phone. Okay. That's okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design of operation. Just like it is now, I dispose of the diapers in my garbage bag and take them outside into the, um, the receptacle outside given by the town. And um, that's all I do. I mean, there's no um, sewage issue. Okay. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity? No. Nope. Um, my driveway is 
between 500 and 800 feet long, so it gives people time to get down and out. There's no um, traffic on the road for parking or anything like that. They have to drive down my driveway, so it won't it won't appear any different. Okay. A bit of housekeeping I forgot to mention before the meeting. We have four members here tonight. If it ends in a 2-2 tie, it is a denial for anybody that wants to have their appeal heard tonight. If you'd like to postpone that, you certainly can. But I just want to make sure everybody knows that as well as you. Because if we get in the button a 2-2 tie, it is a denial. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created from existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially de greater degree in municipal fire police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. So far, I have great babies. <laughs> okay. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Um, uh, there's no um, change in the building, so there will be no construction, which will um, cause any environmental issues. So. Okay. Did I already do D? The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. It's going to be exactly the same, just two new infants. Um, like I said, my house is very far back from the road. There will be no physical change. Um, the neighbors won't even know they're there. Okay. Are you located in, full, in a shoreland zone? No. So that doesn't apply. Uh, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, I'm a co-owner with my husband. Okay. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this application or section. Yes, absolutely. The proposed use will be compatible with existing use in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes. I'm just going to go into the home-based occupation as well while we're going over these. Should be on page 37 slash 41 for everybody that's switching over. Do you have the answers to these questions as Not well for home-based? You might be able to just answer them based upon what you gave us last I'm time. I'm hoping. Okay. The occupation of professionals shall be carried on wholly within the prin principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Yes. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for the residential purposes. Yep, that's true. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. Mm -hmm. Just to be very clear of that one. Yeah, I have one employee that okay. doesn't live there. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under subsection 12, sign regulations, subsection E. You know you can have a sign, correct? We have a sign, and it is according to um, what Mr. Longstaff gave us. Thank you. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps because I don't think you're going to be putting those with the babies, right? No. I think we determined that last time. Yeah. <laughs> you said the same thing. <laughs> no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. No way. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the main neighborhood. No. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the, and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak hours of operation. We have plenty of parking and it's nowhere near the road. And you have a turnaround, I believe, correct? Yeah. The home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Unfinished attic and basement spaces. Did yeah, we, we de calculate this before? Yeah. We determined that last you're time. Not, you're not going any bigger? No, it's same exactly space. the same. Okay, I remember us going over this. Yeah. Space with an accessory unit totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of the floor area, so you're not going to be above that. 
I'm sorry? You're not going above the 1,000 feet of square, square footage area for your home-based no, occupation. No, no. Mm -mm. Mr. Longstaff, I think, has already answered that for you. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitation. I'm assuming you're not going to be doing any retail sales? No. Okay. Do we need to go over those? I think it's illegal to sell children. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building, not applicable. The sale of products, again, not applicable. You're not a fisherman or lobster, so I don't think that's applicable either. Uh, you're not repairing vehicles for people while they're there, so I don't think we're applicable to any of those. Do you want, does the board want to vote on these as a whole, or have any questions on these, or do you want to go down through each individual one and vote? I mean, I think we can vote on them as a whole. And then we'll, we'll go to those. Yeah, well, we basically did it before, so. Yeah, okay. and the applicants noted that the footprint of the space is not going to increase or change. Basically, they just need one extra employee. So our answers would be the same as last time. I'm comfortable with the fact that we did that before with you. So <coughs> we have a motion to uh, so on, the, st on the home-based <laughs> standards. Second. All in favor of the home-based occupation being met. It's unanimous. Thank you. OK, questions before the board? Does anybody have any questions? We had a few beforehand. I don't know if we have any additional at this point. Do we, do we have to, Brian said something about we have to review the criteria for a group? Yeah, home, where is that? Home care. Is that true, Brian? Page 22. Yeah. Thank you. I don't have a tab for that. Which uh, section? Uh, it's in section four. Section four, page 22. Yeah, you see, I don't see a page 22 on that. Oh, mine says 22. I don't know what yours says. Group daycare homes, it's page eight. I can say, I don't have up to 22 there. Well, I'll go with Brian's for right now. Group daycare homes, daycare center facilities, and nursery schools shall comply with the following additional conditions. Access shall be permitted only from streets of higher classification than a local resident street, which Mr. Longstaff has already said you meet, and it has been verified. She's already addressed that today. Okay, and your off-street parking has already been addressed for non-residential employees. Driveways of child care facilities must be configured so that vehicles dropping off and picking up children are not required to back up into the driveway or into the street in order to access, exit the facility. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of space to turn around. Okay, and you're going to make sure people, when they're doing it, they're coming around and they're not backing up. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that is one of the requirements. I don't believe we need to do this, do we? Uh, she and that's for nursery schools and daycare. Okay, so daycare I think we've covered those. Yep. All in favor of the group based home daycare occupation, be well, actually, motion. Move to approve. Second. All in favor of the home based occupation being met for day, uh, daycare? It's unanimous. Okay, now questions from the board? None. Does anybody on this side have any? No. I mean, she's again stated that the footprint of the space is going to increase or change, so nothing's really changing here. She's just adding one employee. Like to open it up for public hearing at this time. Anybody on this matter wish to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Open it up for a motion from the board. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2645 as presented. Actually, we need to do the finding of facts. I apologize on each one of those. I'm jumping the gun again. The proposed, we've already done this, but we, sh we should probably still do it again. The proposed use not create unsafe vehicular conditions by reason, unsafe or unsanitary health conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its designs of operation. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffics in the vicinity. All in favor of that being met? 
And I'm not going into a lot more findings. In fact, I think we can just rely on our findings back from the first time, if I'm not mistaken. No. Thank you. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially greater from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. Not located in a shoreland zone, so that doesn't apply. Uh, basically, you have the, the applicant has a sufficient right or title. We've already seen this before. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. And the applicant has technical and financial ability to meet the standards. I don't think we're putting anything more forth on this. So all in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operations. All in favor of that being met. It's unanimous. Now. <laughs> Make a motion to approve appeal number 2645 as presented. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Keep in mind, you can't go to that 12, baby. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Appeal number 2646, a special exception permit application by Christine A. Flaherty, 58 of Ashwamp Road, <clears throat> assesses map R027, parcel 007. Can you please state your name and where you're from and just a brief description of what you're looking to do? Absolutely. Thank you. My name is Christine Flaherty. I live at uh, 58 Ash Swamp Road in Scarborough. And what are you looking to do? So I'm looking to establish um, a special exception permit for a home occupation and I'm looking to establish an accounting practice doing accounting and tax services at my home and my residence. Um, so the reason I'm looking for the home occupation permit is I'm looking to do some signage at the end of the driveway and hopefully if things go in the direction I'm thinking, we'll uh, want to have an employee at some point uh, to provide some assistance for me. Okay. Seems to be a theme tonight. Mr. <laughs> Long, that do you have any comments? Or? I really have nothing to add to that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Great. We'll go right into the questions. Absolutely. Going to be like deja vu for us here. Mm -hmm. Just give give us your answers to the questions as they come up. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. That is correct. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. I don't anticipate any additional. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater de degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. That's correct. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. There's no changes to the property whatsoever, so that would be correct. Thank you. The proposed use would be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Again, no changes to the property at all, so that Thank would be you. correct. Are you located in a shoreland zone? No. Let's skip over that one. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I'm the sole owner of the property. Thank you. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Correct. Thank you. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. The business at the home is, is by appointment only, so it'll be very um, limited access and it'll be daytime hours basically. Okay, great. Going into the uh, Standards for home-based occupation. Okay. So everybody got those? Everybody else have? The occupation or professions shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Yep, this will be operated out of the daylight basement area of the home only. Okay. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling 
unit for residential purposes. Yes, it's going to represent about 500 square feet of office space, again, in the daylight basement. Okay, thank you. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. That's correct. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under this section. 12, sign regulation, subsection E. I'm assuming you've already discussed that with Mr. Longstaff as to yep. what you can do. Absolutely. Thank you. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of <coughs> materials, and no other exterior indication of home occupation, occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building except as pr expressly permitted by the district regulations in this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. You're not going to be storing lobster traps there. Okay. Thank you. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. That's correct. Thank you. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. True. Yeah. Thank you. In addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. Yep, it's about an 800-foot driveway. There's ample turnaround space, and you'll see that in the pictures that I provided. Um, and again, it's, it's by appointment only, so we're not going to have mass traffic in the area. At this so time. by appointment only, I'm assuming you're only going to have like one or two cars there at any given time? Exactly. Thank you. Not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided that for the purposes of the calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Unfinished attic and basement spaces and space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. So you, you had already stated you have 500 square feet of basement that you're going to be doing? Yes. Is that finished basement? It's already finished, yes. Okay. You doing any retail sales? None. No tax pro or anything? All right, so I don't have to really go into those. Right, you aren't going to do any products that you're going to assemble or put displays out or anything? No. Okay. You're not a fisherman or lobsterman? No. And you're not doing motor vehicle repairs? No. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answers are pretty straightforward on these questions. Uh, we can go down, down them one by one for findings of fact, or we can just go through the group, whatever the board. I'm comfortable voting as a whole, passing all of this reform. I am as well. Okay. No. We're going to just vote on all the home occupations at once, and then we'll go back to the other. Sure. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. All in favor of approving the home-based occupations as being net? It's unanimous. Okay. Back to the others. Any questions on the answers that we've been given so far of the applicant? No, I mean, this is a very straightforward application, very limited use sort of home occupation. I don't think it's going to be creating any sort of change in the neighborhood or anything to that sort. I think so. And you said that you're not going to have any queuing or waiting rooms or things like that. It's by appointment only. It's by appointment only. And quite honestly, if this um, business becomes successful and I need more space, it's not going to be in my home. So right. I'll look for something on the Route 1 corridor at that point. So Sure. And you said that uh, hours of operation can be limited to daytime only? It's daytime only. Um, I may do a Saturday appointment if someone needs to meet on a Saturday. I may do a 6 or 7 p.m. appointment if someone is hard-pressed to meet during mm -hmm. the day, but that's it again. It's a, it's a private residence and I don't want to change the scope of that. Sure. Thank you. No midnight tax filings? No. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I might not be sleeping, no. <laughs> okay, we're going to go down through these uh, once I open it up for the public hearing to see if anyone wishes to speak on this matter. Anyone wish to speak? Seeing none, closing the public hearing. We're going to go down through these, do our findings of facts, and vote on each individual. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its designation of operation. I'm going to start down here because you're the only one. <laughs> I'm satisfied with her answer. Nothing she said is going to indicate that they're going to have any unsanitary or unhealthy conditions. 
Right, I mean, there's no difference between having a guest over and having a, one client over for an appointment. Yeah, I believe there's really nothing here that's going to really pertain to you. Uh, you're not going to be doing anything for sewage disposal. The only emissions to the air or water are going to be the cars coming, and if there's only a couple at a time, I can't see that being a problem. Mm -hmm. And the design of operation, you said it's just going to be by appointment only, so I think I'm pretty good with this one. All in favor of A being met, it's unanimous. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Start right down here again. Uh, she kind of explained her driveway situation being relatively large and everything like that, so I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, and she also said that it's by appointment only, so there's not going to be any anybody driving in randomly, waiting and things like that. So. Again, sort of same response, no difference between having a customer over or a friend over. I don't see any change. And you're not going to allow people to back out onto the road? No. <laughs> From your home? <laughs> it's a long driveway to back out of. Okay. Yeah, I think we're fine with that. I mean, you've covered all the conditions that we'd be looking at. I don't see anything foreseeable for traffic that's going to be added. All in favor of B being met? Unanimous. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I mean, all, all she's doing is having one, maybe two customers in her home uh, which wouldn't be any different than any other home on the street with the number of people in it, so I'm very satisfied with this. <coughs> I don't have anything to add to this one. I agree. No, I agree. I don't think this will change. I don't think from a finding of fact perspective here we really have anything that pertains to this. I mean, <coughs> it's pretty straightforward. All in favor of CBM? The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. I don't even think this pertains to the situation. No, nope, I don't think it does either, and I, I see no issues with this. It's, uh, again, one, one, two people at a time. As Ms. Shoup said, it's like having a friend or a company over. Right, and she's making no actual physical changes to the property. Yeah, I mean, I don't believe you have any real water supplies by you anyways that this would be effective even if you shredded everything and tossed out your backyard. Well water. We won't be doing that. <laughs> All in favor of DB emit? It's unanimous. E, the proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. I don't think it's going to be any different than any other home on the street. I agree. I think the only thing that's going to be different is you're going to have a sign outside and you're going to be operating out of your, business, out of your basement, which you may have been operating out of anyways up to this point, so just without the sign. All in favor, all in favor of uh, D being met? It's unanimous. The proposed use be compatible with existing use of the neighborhood with respect to fiscal size. Oops, sorry, did that one. That was E. Yeah. yeah, E. Sorry, I apologize. If located in a shoreland zone, it's not located in a shoreland zone, so I think we're fine. All in favor of F? Unanimous. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I think we have documentation in here that shows us that. You have a warranty deed, so. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see the deed. I, the deed is there. Yep, that's basically all we need. You have sufficient right and title. All in favor of this being met? It's unanimous. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this subsection and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of the section. I don't think we really have anything we're applying to this, so. No. I don't see anything problem, any problem here. No, I have nothing to add to this one. Right. I mean, the applicant has told us that she's been in this field for 30 years, so I believe that she's met this. Yeah, I mean, you've told us you've got the ability. I mean, we're relying on what you're telling us. You've already been kind of doing it anyway, like you said. So let's hope the business works, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll have a big building on Route 1. So. <laughs> All in favor of that one being met? It's unanimous. And the proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation, noise, and hours of operation. I think you pretty much elaborated on that pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, just the daytime hours by appointment only with an occasional 6 or 7 o'clock p.m. appointment. That's fine. Right, I don't 
see this creating any other changes. Yeah, I mean, you've told us what your hours are going to be. You say you may have an occasional Saturday appointment or something, but I don't foresee, like you said, someone driving in at midnight to get your services. Let's hope not. <laughs> All in favor of that being met? Last one. Unanimous. Motion. I'll move to approve appeal number 2646 as presented. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. You. You're welcome. Appeal number 2647, limited reduction of yard size variance appeal by Maris LLC, 16 Ocean Ave, Assessor's Map U002, parcel 110. And for representation, can you please state your name and where you're from? I'm Walter Wilson from the design company representing the owner. And just a brief the application. Brief overview of what you're looking to do. Uh, the owner is proposing a second floor expansion above the existing one-story home located on the property. Also, the existing garage is to be removed and rebuilt to meet the required setbacks in the CDCR1 zone. The location of the existing home will require a limited reduction of yard size in order to vertically expand the structure. In order to comply with the CDCR1 character-based requirements, the front wall of the second floor is proposed to be directly above the front wall of the existing building. This will require a reduction in the front yard setback for the expansion. The right side yard setback to the existing building and the proposed second floor will also require a reduction in yard size. The CDCR1 zone requires a rear yard setback of 30 feet and the existing building location meets this requirement. However, a rear canopy is proposed over a sliding glass door leading out to the rear yard and in the character ordinance allows a canopy to encroach in the rear yard setback of three feet creating a 27 foot setback at the rear but due to the angle of the property line the canopy will extend into the allowable setback which will require a reduction in yard size <clears throat> the proposed second floor expansion is to be constructed above the existing one-story structure and will not expand the building footprint we are requesting a front yard reduction of 3.5 feet, a right side yard reduction of 8 inches, and a rear yard reduction of 9 inches for the canopy. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, any staff comments or anything to add to this? Uh, no, pretty straightforward. I think Mr. Wilson explained it pretty well. I have nothing to add to that. Okay. We'll go down through the questions. A limited reduction of yard size. Did everybody have that section? <coughs> if you could just give us your answers to the questions, that'd be great. Okay. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. The original building was constructed in 1914, and the rear extension that's on the existing building was constructed in 1969, according to the town assessor's records. Thank you. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner, of the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The proposed second floor expansion utilizes the existing footprint of the home and the design has obtained administrative approval com for compliance with the Higgins Beach character-based zoning requirements. The majority of the homes in the zoning district are two stories in height. The adjacent properties contain two-story buildings and are located closer to the front property line of Ocean Avenue than this property, as well as being slightly closer to the property lines. The finished height of the proposed vertical expansion will be 26 foot 4 inches and the building height as measured by the uh, building code will be uh, 22 feet in height. The maximum allowable building height in this zone is 32 feet. The existing building footprint will not be increased. The existing garage will be removed and replaced with a new structure that meets the building setbacks of the zone. The re uh, requested reductions in the yard size are reasonably necessary to permit the owner to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other properties in the zoning district. Thank you. 
Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to, practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. The existing residential home is located, like I said, in the CDCR1 zone and does not meet the required front yard or side setbacks. The existing enclosed front porch is a required component in the CDCR1 zone and that will remain. Uh, front porch can encroach closer to the street line than the building setback itself. The front yard, uh, front yard setback requirement is 18 feet as measured to the front of the principal building and the existing building is located 14 and a half feet from the property line. The right side yard setback requirement is 8 feet and the existing building is set back 7 foot 4 from the property line. The proposed second floor addition cannot be set back from the first floor wall plane in order to satisfy the building setback lines. Uh, Article 4A 2D of the zoning district says the outer walls of the main building mass must be located entirely in a single plane. Articulation in the wall plane is not permitted except through the use of a component. So therefore the second floor walls of the proposal must be constructed over and align with the existing first floor walls in order to be compliant with the design requirements in the zoning district. The requested setback reductions are needed due to the location of the existing structure on the property and the requirements of the CDCR1 base code. It would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable side yard requirements that would require tearing the whole building down and relocating. Thank you. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. The proposed improvements to the existing uh, home has received administrative review for the character-based ordinance and the second story expansion to be constructed utilizing the existing footprint. As stated previously, most of the homes in the area are two-story structures, including the adjacent properties. The proposed building height is approximately 10 feet less than the allowable height in the zone. Therefore, the impact and effect of this proposal on existing uses in the neighborhood would not be substantially different or greater than the impacts and effects for a building which does conform with, this, with the yard requirements. Uh, that would even allow a building to be even higher than what we're proposing. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No construction is started. Okay, great. Any questions from the Board? Questions, I'll Nothing? Nothing over here? Okay, this time I'd like to open it up to public hearing. Anyone from the public wish to speak on this appeal? Seeing none, close the public hearing. We'll go with questions. Okay, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. We'll start down here again. That's what he's saying. I've got to believe him. I've got to challenge him. I get a copy of the assessor's. I'm thing. sure you do. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Mr. Longstaff verified with the town that it was, that it was uh, constructed in 1914 and the extension was added in 1969. I agree. Yeah, Mr. Longstaff's verified it and we've also got it from the representative of the applicant, so I think that's more than sufficient on that. All in favor of one being met. Unanimous. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district. Stop down here again. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, he's, he's just trying to do what everybody else down there is doing. We've got a new uh, character code down there, and people want to take advantage of it, and they should take advantage of it. And due to the location of his house, he's just a little bit off here and there, like all of them are down there, so. I would agree. I think 
based on the similar homes in the area who, that are also two story that also have a front porch. Um, but then he's not the applicant's not asking for anything extraordinary in this circumstance. I agree. I mean, that just doesn't seem unreasonable. I'm not familiar with the area so much, so I'm, I guess I'm relying on you saying that a lot of the houses in there are two stories. That, that seems pretty accurate. Um, that seems fine. How much higher is this going up? Pardon me? How much higher did you say this is going up from the existing structure? Uh, from the existing structure? I have to check. Okay. Can you get a point? Existing roof line would be about eight and a half feet higher than the current one. Okay, the so the existing is higher. Okay, thank you. All in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. I mean, the only other thing you could do is tear it down and, and start over, and it's not fair to ask somebody to do that when all you're doing is asking for six inches on one side and three and a half feet on the other side. So. Even if you did start over, it's still the same problem, right? If you tore it down, you have to go in the same way. Is that still falling in the same? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree with uh, Mr. Blaze on this one that they're just looking for some minor adjustments here again it, back to my other point of it's not an extraordinary request that they're asking for right I think they're just trying to work with the limited space that they have already so. yeah and good back to the last one I like the fact that it's not going up higher than the existing one and that we're kind of pulling some of those things into play a little bit all in favor of three being met unanimous the impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. They're all the same now. You, you're down there all the time, right? I'd say that it would bring the, the, <coughs> the structure into more conformance characteristically and aesthetically with the surrounding homes there. I agree. Well, we're working on seeing that. Uh, how are we going to be done for Mr. Lonsdale? <laughs> I can turn it right off. Oh, there it is right there. <laughs> no, I'd rather you have it up. This is definitely helpful. I think you're right up on it. Which one are we looking at? Yeah, you can see around it, it looks like they're all up substantially, especially the one right next door to the left. Yeah, they're two-story homes. They have uh, closed porches. Thank you for bringing that up. That's definitely helpful. Uh, the applicant has not commenced construction or enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limit reduction in yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering after the fact application. I think this is pretty straightforward. No construction's been done. Last time I drove by, I didn't see anything going on. I was going to say, you're driving by all the time. You'll be able to tell us if something was happening. Can you just get all these appeals all in one when you're <laughs> down here? Any other comments? I have no comments to add. Yeah, and we've been told that it hasn't constructed, so we're going to rely on you. All in favor of 5 being met? It's unanimous. Do I have a motion? 
I make a motion to approve appeal number 2647 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Appeal number 2648, a limited reduction of yard size appeal by Joseph G. and Gerda I. Is it Kunkel? Kunkel? Uh, 12 Bickford Street, assesses map U024, parcel 021. Do we have a representative? Can just take the podium. So Mr. Wilson gets all his stuff. And just let us know who you are and where you're from. I'm Joe Kunkel from 12 Bickford Street. And what are you looking to do, just a brief synopsis? Uh, well, we have this uh, traditional cottage, and uh, its footprint is only 480 square feet. It's uh, a bit too small for us, and we would like to uh, extend it uh, uh, 12 feet back in into our property. Uh, it is already close to 10 feet, so we need this uh, reduction of yard size. Size. Mr. Longstaff, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, only that uh, the, the property does qualify for the uh, eligibility for a limited reduction of yard size. The request qualifies for the limited reduction of yard size. And, uh, the rest is pretty self explanatory. Okay. It's like days ago again here. Yeah. All right. Just going to go down to the questions, if you can just answer how you would answer. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, the existing building was built uh, in 1930, prior to 1991. Thank you. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district? Uh, yes, we have very limited uh, space, uh, even though the Turners, who it seems like everybody in town has lived there, uh, but the Turners raised four kids in that house. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a bit too small for, for us. Uh, we shoehorned into it. Uh, and uh, uh, it'll uh, provide a missing dining room and a downstairs bathroom, uh, which is needed because my wife, although she can climb stairs to our bedroom upstairs, uh, uh, having to go up and down uh, is uh, hard for her. And here you have mo mobility and, and for guests as part of your... Yes. I think you already had um, missing dining room space downstairs bathroom. Okay. And Thank we'll you. have a ba ex uh, basement uh, expansion as well. Okay. Thank you. Due to the physical features of the lot or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Yes, the cottage is really a beautiful, has beautiful lighting coming in from the three sides, the uh, left and right side and the front, and uh, uh, the back side has hardly any, uh, it has two, basically two windows. And uh, so it's logical to just project the cottage design back 12 feet uh, to provide this extra space. It's also providing that space directly towards the rising sun. It's just will be a beautiful, uh, great room where we'll have a dining room, be able to. Uh, our, our neighborhood is really nice. I mean, we socialize, we have all sorts of things. And our limited size just hasn't allowed us to accommodate that. Um, and uh, we'd like to. <coughs> join in with that whole procedure. Did you My son you? lives catty corner to us, okay. actually, and uh, <laughs> nice. being able to share the. Uh, this show is right here. This is it. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> you can see me 
helping my wife out of the uh, of the car. That's proof positive. And uh, <laughs> right. we, we we made this uh, paver driveway, and we've just recently replaced all the all the windows. It's really uh, turning into a a great little place, and it doesn't require a great deal of work to clean it. We love it, except it's a little bit too small. It's a good job of getting Google to get that while you were helping your wife. <laughs> right. <laughs> so probably, I'm assuming, going up wouldn't be an option because it's just structurally probably. Oh, no. And, and the light coming in from the windows on the side, we couldn't extend out either towards the front or towards, uh, towards the sides. We have to go back in order to, well, the cottage style, we want to make it continuous. Okay, thank you. Destroy that. The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I think you've kind of already gone over that a little bit more in your answer of the previous yeah. one, so. And you haven't commenced any construction, enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested, so the board is not considering an after the fact application. We've done nothing. Okay. Any questions from the board at this time? Folks are really quiet tonight. It seems pretty straightforward. I mean, he's, he's making this case that he can only expand rearwards idealistically in this. He can't really go up because of uh, mobility of the spouse and. Uh, Again, I'll say it like I did last previously, is this not extraordinary what he's asking for? Any other questions? Seeing none, I'll open it up to the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this topic? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Down through the questions. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Ms. Well, I'm probably assuming you can verify this as well. Verify that, yes. Yep. Mr. Blaise, any questions on that? No nope. comments? No comments? No. With Mr. Longstaff actually verifying it, you've given us your information about it, that's fine for me. All in favor of one being met? It's unanimous. Two, the requested reduction reasonably necessary to permit the owner-occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other pr similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Start over here as well. Yeah, I, I agree with his answer. I mean, you want to take an existing home and, and just continue to use it the best you can. And I think he's, he's done a good job in, in selecting how he wants to add the additional space, and it's got to be on the first floor. So, well, additional. Uh, sorry. No, that's it. Um, additionally, um, he's saying they want to provide uh, one a missing dining room space, but also a downstairs bathroom, and clearly stated, and then shown on the Google Street View, going up and downstairs to use the bathroom every single time would be um, would be a bit challenging. So. Again, nothing extraordinary that he's asking for. Um, I think most homes have a bathroom on the first floor, so I don't think he's uh, asking for anything crazy on this one. All right, and I think it's reasonably necessary to have a dining room if, if you want to have one. I agree. I never had one for years, so I can't say on that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you've given us the picture showed you helping your wife out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've given us information as to why you're not trying to go up. You told me that the structure is really not stable to probably do that. If you had, you'd probably have to redo everything. So um, I like the fact that you're trying to adhere to the character of the neighborhood as well and trying to put it back and make sure it still has that same appearance from the front. So all in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Mr. Chair. Yes. I just want to clarify one thing uh, with Mr. Kunkel. I believe part of the proposed addition is a two-story addition. Part of it's a single story, is it? Uh, the second story will be extending one of the uh, uh, be the bedroom, one small bedroom, yeah. three feet, and we're ex making the upstairs bedroom three feet longer. It's quite tight. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> minimal. Concern. And then uh, on the <laughs> other side, the additional 
uh, will be a, a library sort of so uh, a, a part of it. It will be facing the rising sun. So a part of the addition is a single story addition, and then part of it's two story. Yes. Is that, is that correct? It's For the just it's the attic, basically the attic space. For the two story, you're only are we only looking at three feet, or are we looking at more than that? You're saying the bedroom's going to extend three feet. Are you adding on an additional footage from what the bedroom would have been? Uh, that bedroom, yes. The, the bedroom uh, will extend over the 12, so the 12 feet mm -hmm. um, of the addition. The first three feet of it will be an extension of one of the bedrooms. And, another, and uh, on the... Uh, south side of uh, where the bathroom is, that will be made three feet larger. And then there's, uh, uh, what, nine feet left to be uh, a library. Okay. And there will be skylights for the bathroom so that we have ventilation. So, so the portion on the right hand side here is, is that's that's the rear addition, the proposed rear addition. That's two stories, and then you have the part on the left that's a single story portion of the addition. Is that? I, well, the whole bottom. This is, is the back view. The whole bottom is a twelve foot. So, oh, so that's it almost what, looks the same <laughs> in the. Uh, original house. We're just extending it. Yeah, because the original house back. had a roof line too that looks similar to that when you had the picture up. Do you still um, have that if you view? look at um, uh, what I is labeled um, page 10. You will see the upstairs, the second floor plan, with the attic, basically, which has a enlarged bedroom, which is enlarged by three feet into the uh, addition. Okay. So is the remainder of that just a cathedral ceiling? Is that all that is? No, it is. I, okay. I wanted that. My wife said no. So it's just attic space. You're not actually adding living space on a second story or on a second floor. It's going to be a, I'm calling it a library. Yeah, I think he oh, referred okay. to it as a right. library. Yeah. It, it has three windows in it facing the rising sun. You said to look at page 10. That's what I've been looking at. So Is this yeah. page 10? What I have on the screen? No. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's this one. I saw the X at the bottom. I thought that was Roman. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is page 10. Uh, the packet that you gave me started with page 3. You don't have, you don't have your numbers just, up there, that's why. He's, he's been labeled as pages 4. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. He made, he made the digital copy before we put the Okay. So you wanted to have it all just one floor, but your wife shot you down on that one? Yes. I don't, I don't think you're asking for anything out of the ordinary. I mean, we've seen much worse than this from people coming before us asking us. For. I just wanted to make sure that the board had yeah. a clear, clear understanding because I wasn't clear on it. But okay. Perhaps I was the only one that was confused, That's but I wanted to make sure everybody else was. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for going, going through that. I appreciate it. Where were we, number four? The impacts and effects of enlargement, expansion of new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the ad size requirements. We'll start down here again. Yeah, I mean, he's just going from 685 square feet to 1,100, a little over 1,100 square feet. I mean, that's certainly not a big impact to the community. Or it's probably still one of the smallest houses down in this community. Plus he wants that. And I have paint. to clean it, so I <laughs> keep it That's why you wanted the cathedral ceiling. 
Yes. <laughs> Over here. Very similar, uh, looking on the street view and from the applicant's descriptions that, you know, this is a very small house and it's not really going to impact anything in the area about making it a little bit larger. Right, and the expansion's wholly in the back, so I mean, you know, people <clears throat> aren't even able to see from the street. With that view, we can see the marsh. <laughs> I won't be able to see the marsh from my library. That's awesome. We don't look for things on view. Looks like you've got a lot of natural greenery for buffer between you and others as well. And I, yes. I appreciate the fact that you're trying to keep it in, in the same character as the neighborhood and doing most of what you're doing in the back. And, and we cooperate with our neighbors. Uh, oh, Darlene Smith was just out there trimming my hedge. <laughs> That's one thing I didn't ask in the beginning. Do we have any letters on this? No. No, we didn't have any letters on the other one. Yeah. My bad. All in favor of four being met? See miss? The applicant has not commenced a construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested so that the board is not considering after the fact application. You haven't started building anything, right? It's pretty straightforward. I don't know if we really need to do a lot of fine no. back on this. You've told us that you haven't. I'm sure somebody could probably verify it from the town. Someone that maybe drives through areas and stuff. <laughs> All in favor of five being met? It's unanimous. Open it up for a vote or further discussion? I don't have anything to add on this. Again, it's a pretty uh, modest expansion to an existing home that's not out of character with other houses in the neighborhood. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve appeal number 2648 if presented. I'll second. All those in favor? unanimous. Thank you. Point of information? Yes. I need, I now need to get a permit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Bog, staff. Your variance has been approved, now you need to come see me for a permit. Yeah. Thank you. And I need to sign a piece of paper for you. But you can see, you can go and see Mr. Longstaff tomorrow if you want on that. Correct? Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Maybe the next day. All right. Okay. Uh, Leroy? Thank you. Can Thank I have like a two minute break? Sure. Can we take a two minute intermission? We're going to break for two minutes for the recording. Teresa, I forgot to remind you, did you start to record by the way? <laughs> That's great. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's our belts and suspenders. If you want to just take us off air for a brief moment, that would be great.
we'll just enjoy this awkward silence together. Oh, we're good. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We had to take a brief break there. Um, on to appeal number 2649, variance appeal by Wild Duck Campground, LLC, 39 Dunstan Landing Road, Assessor's Map R065, parcel 003A. Please introduce yourself and where you're from and what you're looking to do briefly, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, members of the board. Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. I uh, have the honor this evening of uh, being able to represent UV Minogian uh, and Wild Duck Campground. Uh, this is a very quiet local campground that is off of uh, Pine Point and Dunstan Landing Road. It's actually at the end of the road. Uh, it uh, uh, is essentially a campground of 70 units that is primarily uh, destined for uh, RV camping, although they do have sites open for anybody. It is a 21 and older campground, uh, so there are no children in the area. It's basically an adult campground or catering to adults primarily, again, with RVs. Uh, Mr. Uh, Minogren uh, acquired the property in 2006. The property was originally created as a uh, campground in 1955, and the buildings, as you see them here on, uh, according to municipal records, were set in uh, 1960. And uh, as any typical first-generation American, he's very frequently, or when he, when he acquired a business, um, he wanted to put the uh, majority of what he was able to uh, uh, economically afford into uh, building up the campsites themselves, uh, improving them substantially. And uh, this was about uh, what, 12 years ago. So uh, he is now looking, he has now gotten to the point where he would like to improve the entrance area, not aesthetically, he's put a lot into landscaping. Uh, but the buildings themselves are now approaching 60 years old, uh, one of them in particular. And uh, I'd call your attention just momentarily to one of your series of photographs. Uh, you'll see that uh, one of these uh, buildings actually has a, uh, a porch on it, which is the area where they have uh, the off a part of the office and uh, some of the storage that he's looking to improve. And uh, that porch is actually supported by uh, cinder, just regularly stacked cinder blocks. Uh, which is not a good situation. And he's gotten to the point now where he would like to be able to improve it. So what this improvement entails is uh, actually getting rid of the two trailer units that you see there in the photograph, replacing them with a single two-story unit that would be right in the middle of this property or in the middle of this little peninsula. Uh, that also entails getting rid of and uh, revegetating areas uh, that are impervious surface for the driveway. Uh, there are actually turnouts that are across from this actual uh, uh, setup uh, where his vehicles would then be uh, able to park. Uh, and essentially what he's looking at doing is decreasing the overall footprint from this area uh, from 914 square feet of, uh, of structure to 593 square feet. Uh, and again, uh, decreasing by literally getting rid of the driveway that's between the two units uh, that you currently see there. Uh, these buildings are, are quite old. They are very close. They're on the peninsula, on this little peninsula that's wholly within the campground. Uh, they really need to be replaced. They're fairly close to the resource. Uh, as you can see on this map, what we're looking at there is the existing structures underneath, and then the dark uh, structure is that which is proposed uh, to replace them. And that's the dark structure right now is actually parked right in the middle of what the impervious surface uh, area is or the driveway is, which would, again, be, uh, we'd be getting rid of that. So we're significantly improving the, uh, the setbacks uh, from the resource. Those setbacks are actually going to go from the uh, current setback of two feet from the resource right now on both sides of the property uh, to a total of uh, 14 feet on one side, 18 feet on the other, and then 23 feet from the back. So overall, it's a considerable improvement uh, from an environmental standpoint from what's out there now. From an aesthetic and structural standpoint, it's also a significant improvement. Uh, Mr. Minogren will be living there. Uh, he also wants to, and I know there was a question amongst the board comments about uh, storage. One of the things that um, he's experienced some challenges with lately is our, as RVs or his campers get larger and larger, uh, and people love to be able to come here because it's exceptionally quiet, unlike some of the other campgrounds that, that tend to cater to children and are a little bit noisier and what have you. Uh, this is very, a very quiet area. and. Uh, He's discovered that as some of the, uh, the campers start to get uh, larger, the campers meaning the vehicles, um, that uh, they have certain needs that he is not able to provide. In some cases, he's not able to provide them anyway, any uh, actual mechanical uh, services to the RVs, they have to go off site. But there are certain things that he said he would like to be able to provide that he literally doesn't have space for. 
So what happened is the architect uh, designed, his, as you can see it, um, his living facility is going to be living up primarily upstairs, have the office downstairs, there is a section of the back for livability, and then the office, uh, which you see right there in the front left-hand corner, uh, this is where he intends to be able to also have the uh, um, small numbers of merchandise that he has for sale that's right now in this sort of ramshackle addition onto one of the trailers that is supported by these uh, cinder blocks and getting rid of that completely, putting these materials on the back side of the office uh, in that storage area that he needs to be able to supply to the campers. Some of these materials include basic things like filter, people that, that people will just literally come on down and see if they've got like filters. Um, there's some uh, uh, fishing gear and lures and what have you uh, that he also offers there in basic um, uh, merchandise for the people that are into the campground. Uh, so he would like to be able to provide a, a better area for that and let the people actually choose the uh, uh, whatever he offers on site themselves as opposed to having saying, do you have this, and then going into uh, the storage area that is, if not quite precarious, it's sort of an accident waiting to happen. Uh, so bottom line is he would like to be able to improve the overall site, uh, make it considerably more environmental, environmentally friendly by significantly decreasing the impervious surface there, and uh, that would essentially be the, the final touch, as it were, to improving the campground. Uh, I should mention that as this is the only gate to the campground, there's only one entrance, and uh, the, uh, it has to be where the entrance is. Obviously, the, the, as soon as you get just past uh, this building, uh, the campground actually opens up into uh, the rest of the camping site, so the building really does have to be exactly where it's shown. Uh, this is also open for site plan review, uh, and we went to, J to the uh, planner initially, and uh, one of the things that he had asked is, uh, apparently the town has very, very little material on uh, or background or references on this site, uh, given its age. And he had asked that we uh, uh, do a, uh, a surveyed location of the internal uh, workings of the build of the uh, campsite, which we have done. So in conjunction with uh, this particular change, assuming we were able to get the variance, uh, we do go to uh, the planning board and we show them uh, essentially what this is entailing as well. And then they also have, uh, if they have requested, we're going to send to them uh, considerably more information about the campground itself. Uh, but notwithstanding that fact, we're here obviously just to be able to obtain approvals for uh, putting up the new building. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or address any comments that you may have. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, any comments or additional information on this appeal? Um, only the same comments that we normally have on these, um, anything in the shoreland zone when they have to come for a variance, it has to be the standard hardship variance because um, uh, you can't apply for a practical difficulty variance if you're in a shoreland or a floodplain area. So they're limited to, the, of course, the toughest variance to get, um, having to prove uh, undue hardship. So that's really the challenge, as it is with any, uh, any uh, variance request in the shoreland zone. Um, so it's, it's sort of up to the board to determine um, if they've met, met that test of undue hardship, um, which I think is, you know, a very difficult thing to meet. This would be a perfect candidate for a practical difficulty variance. I wish, I wish that was the case. Um, but, um, and the other thing is, any time we have a variance in the shoreland zone, as, as we've experienced before, I have to forward that application to the DEP shoreland zone coordinator. Um, and uh, he actually uh, sent back an email and said, I have no comment. However, he went on to reiterate the same comments that I had in my, it, he hadn't seen my comments, but he had the same thoughts is that there didn't seem to be a lot of storage built into this. So, um, and, and I thank Mr. Fisher for his explanation. I still I guess I didn't see a lot of storage. I saw a lot of living space and some storage under the stairs is about all I saw. So I'm not really sure how that's going to benefit the campground so much as it would benefit the people living in the, in the uh, dwelling. So. so we didn't get any positive or negative feedback from the state on this one like we normally Not officially. I don't know how you say I, I have no comment and then go on to tell me <laughs> all of the... So I, I'll have to talk to Mike about that sometime to see how we're supposed to interpret that. <laughs> but... Um, that's really all I have to add. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, let's go down through the questions for a variance. Um, can I ask a general sure, question? Is this right the ahead. right procedure time to do that? Um, 
Is Go the ahead. whole property located in the Shoreland Zone? All but a very, very small sliver of the very far end of this, which is literally the furthest away from where the office is right now. Right. And that's because, the, uh, as you can see from the overall photograph that the uh, zoning administrator had, um, you can see that the, uh, the marsh kind of wraps around, and uh, there's also a pond on the inside, a freshwater pond on the mm -hmm. inside. So when you end up taking applying the shoreland zone to both the upland or the uh, uh, inland waterway and the other waterway at 250 feet, about 90 plus percent of the campground is in the shoreland zone. Right. You know, we were talking about like storage, and I mean, I'm just wondering if there was somewhere else on the facility where you could legally put a shed or something for storage, where you know you're saying we need more room, and uh, I didn't know if there was space to do that somewhere else. Kind of unclear how much space is available. Why don't we go that down through the questions and we can address those as we go. Can I, can I just ask a question? Yes. Uh, we're going to put these people through a lot with this variance appeal. I'd just like to know ahead of time what can be done. Based on Mr. Longstaff's comments, I don't think a lot. Well, no, I mean, we I just... Mean, can he, can he pull in a new trailer or replace the old trailer with a new trailer? Um, well, as we've, as we've seen before, the way our zoning ordinance reads is any replacement of a, a non-conforming structure must now meet all of the conforming setbacks. They can't meet the conforming setbacks, so that's the difficulty. You can improve the trailer that's there. You could probably expand each of those, and I don't want to call them tra trailers, they're manufactured homes <laughs> being used as one as an office and one as a residence, but you could expand them both by 30% area and volume. So you could theoretically combine them. You lose the benefit of pulling them away from the edge of the resource. I mean, we're talking you know, 10 feet, 13, 14 feet. It's not like it's a huge benefit, but it is a benefit, it, you know, to pull them back away. Um, it, it's a little bit, it's a, it's, a, it's a big question to ask yet, what can you do? There's, there's some stuff that you can do, there's a well, lot that you can't do. It means an awful lot as mm -hmm. far as how you want to deal with this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean... But, but we can't, we're not sitting here trying to come up with what you can do. Our job as a board, your job as a board, is to look at the application and decide if it's met the criteria. Really shouldn't, I, I, I appreciate where you're going with it, and I totally understand. It's just that it, it's not really doing any good. The application is what we have to look at. We, we, well, we can't. I'm, what I'm getting at is I think the ordinance is forcing him to be non-conforming and forcing him to lose value. If he can't do anything, well, forget it. I'll bring that up when we go through the questions. <laughs> Let's go through the questions and we'll get to some of these things, I think, along the way. I have some questions myself. Sure. Variance is always a hard one to approve and we have to approve it based upon the information that we're giving and what's before us and that's all we can consider. It's not our job to change things around and find a different solution, unfortunately. It's like sometimes we may want to do that, but unfortunately that's not our job. Land in question, we'll go right into A here. The land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. The toughest question out there, and I don't know how you're going to get around this one. Um, that's always challenging, always has been. Uh, one of the reasons, again, that uh, uh, Mr. Minogren uh, actually went to this to begin, or went, wanted to come here to begin with, is that uh, he's made all the improvements that he can make, or make, as, as he's felt he could make, to the actual site itself. But when you drive into this uh, campground, and we invite you over there, it's actually quite a lovely campground. Um, the first thing you see, although there's a lot of flower pots and great uh, landscaping, are the ends of two, uh, two manufactured homes. Um, and they're old. Uh, again, according to record, he bought it in 2006. They've been there long before he bought them. According to records, they were in place in 1960. Uh, they need to be replaced. Could they be replaced in, in the existing footprint? I suppose that's possible. I don't know what we would have to do with the board for that, but he doesn't want to do that. He was actually looking at that initially 
um, and then uh, decided that it would be a lot more prudent to try to be able to consolidate because he goes back and forth. There's actually a, he lives in one of the, the, the right side trailer and the, the left one is where some of the storage is, the office is, he's got another, um, basically a guest room in the back. Um, that particular trailer, the manufactured home on that side isn't doing particularly well and this is the one with the very precarious deck on the side of it. Um, as far as the hardship is concerned, he believes that, uh, for whatever reason, uh, that uh, his business has been going down a little bit, uh, where most other businesses since the recession, most other businesses in this area of Maine, as far as this type of uh, uh, facility are concerned, have been growing. Uh, and it's not for want of, from his perspective, it's not for want of people wanting to come to the facility, but once they get in there, there are certain amenities that they would like to be able to have that they can't get on site. Um, unlike several other campgrounds, uh, that tend to have trading posts and retail stores and what have you. He has no intention of doing that. But there are several things that he's been asked about in the past. Uh, do you have this? Can we get this? Uh, can you get this for us? And again, what he has done is said essentially, yes, I will get that. I do not have it, but I will get it for you. And he's got a relationship with several of the uh, entities that are businesses that are around the area that actually cater to RVs and and have these various things that uh, the tubing and the, and the filters and what have you that these people expect to be able to have rather than send them out. And he does carry some of those minor things, but he doesn't have them for everything. And there's a great number of these RVs. So uh, is it a huge increase in space? I look at it just the way you did, not particularly, but it's a considerably more effective use of the space as far as uh, carrying a lot, of the a lot of the material that he expects to be able to now uh, use to say, yes, I've got it, and here it is uh, right on site. Uh, it's not uh, a, a huge offering. It's a relatively small campground anyway, but um, he's convinced that because a lot of the people have said, well, now we've got to take our RVs and we've got to drive into town to get a filter or try to find some bait or whatever it might be. And he's like, I'd really like to be able to offer this right here at the campground. Um, toward that end, as far as a hardship is concerned, he feels if he doesn't, isn't able to do that um, and improve these facilities to that extent, it's just going to continue to not look particularly good when people come in and for the people who have been there, many of whom are repeat, and some, some of the people actually leave their vehicles there uh, over the year. But um, he's just afraid of losing business. And if he's able to do it the way he would like to be able to do it, he's got only himself to blame if the business goes down. In this particular case, he's gotten to the point where he'd like to improve everything, not only for himself, uh, but environmentally as well. And he kind of looks at that as a win-win. We explained to him it's not quite that easy. There's a few processes through which he has to go to be able to do this. And that's when he said, okay, let's go ahead and do this. I think this will significantly improve my business. Otherwise, I am uh, destined to be losing money, and that's not why I got into business to begin with. Okay, thank you. B, need for the variances due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood? It's certainly the unique circumstance. When you take a look at the overall property uh, and the photos that are up, um, it's a very unique property. As Karen mentioned, uh, as far as the shoreline zoning is concerned, geographically it's very interesting. There's a lot of uh, uh, peninsulas and uh, little isthmuses that people are going through. Uh, so in this particular case, given that it is set up as a campground, it has been that way for 60 years, uh, there's only one place to be able to enter, and that's exactly where it is. So you know, the, need for the, the buildings need to go where they are, or the replacement building needs to go where these two are. And given that, it's the unique circumstance of the property itself. Thank you. C, the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality? Not at all. And D, that the hardship does not result from the action taken by the applicant or the prior owner? Uh, again, uh, not uh, either of those. The buildings were, were originally uh, set in 1960, uh, which was quite a number of owners ago. And the 1960 would have precluded zoning. Thank you. Um, any questions of the board? I have a question. Um, so in, in the letter, and, and, I, and I certainly appreciate his, his, um, his willingness to try to improve his business and uh, want to make it better, but if you're saying that, if they're saying that they need the structure for the success of their business, uh, you know, does he, and you've mentioned bait, you've mentioned fishing rods, air filters. I'm just wondering how that gets stored in this building because there's a bathroom, a powder room, entry hall, kitchen, living room, 
and a 99 square foot office. I'm just wondering, you know, for and there's a doorway into that office as well. I'm just looking like physically where are they going to store this stuff? And I'm not an RV expert by any means. I don't own an RV. Um, but storage under stairs, I, I, you know, do you keep bait under there or fishing rods under there? Um, I'm just wondering where all this stuff is going to go. The issue I have with this, and um, and again, it's just where is where is everything going to go here? I mean, this looks to me like it's just it's a home, and with a small office here that someone can access, and uh, and I appreciate the, the, I understand the situation they're in, that there really is not much at all that they can do here, but looking at the adjacent building, the, uh, the modular structure, it's what, 500 square feet, or on, let's see, uh, you know, just the compared storage space between the addition, mm -hmm. between the side structure, as well as their existing home structure, ignoring, even just ignoring the home structure, I believe the storage structure is on the left. If I'm assuming that correctly, yes. I believe you're right. Um, you know that's that's a lot of space, including with the guest quarters in there as well. But you know where does that space get made up in this building? And based on the plans, I just have a hard time believing that they can fit all this in the office and storage under the stairs without having it trucked in or delivered in anyways. So if a lot of the stuff's going to get trucked in, or if he has to go out and pick it up anyways, how you know that's nothing stopping him from doing that now. Uh, no, there is nothing stopping him from doing it right now, and that's in fact what he does. What he'd like to do is do it a lot less than he does. Um, I'd ask the same question, saying, you know, are these really the plans that you're going to be going through? And, and you can take a look at this. These are very rudimentary architectural plans. Um, I essentially believe, I did not ask a, a UB this in particular, but I believe it's designed as a house. When it looks at it, call it what it is. It looks, acts, and smells like a house. He's intending to use the downstairs portion of this as office and storage. Um, he also has an off or, or the, uh, uh, the reception area when people come in. So I take him at what he says, I will have more room to be able to do, and we're not talking major you know, engine parts or anything like that, but he's yeah. talking about things that he has been asked to supply or if he supplies and has been forced to say, no, I don't do that. And he's tried to be accommodating. He will run out in the evenings after the office is actually closed and try to purchase some of these things for his clients. And they know that he's doing that. Um, it's gotten to the point where that's just not efficient. And now that he's being able to afford to be able to do this uh, himself, he would like to be able to consolidate that. How much more can he actually get in there in the proposal as opposed to what he's got now? I don't know that. Um, I do know that uh, he came up with this. This wasn't a prodding issue. It's more of a UV. This is not going to be a simple procedure to be able to do this. And we ran through the criteria. Like most people, he doesn't really understand the depths of that. But, and when we explained it to him, and, and he said, well, the principal reason, not only for aesthetically approving my business, is because I need to be able to supply things to my patrons that I can't do now. And he's saying, I'm storing this in the facility. Whether he takes advantage of a bedroom, quote unquote, as shown on the plan to do that, I don't know. Sure, and I and I, under, and I understand. And I appreciate your answer, Jim. Um, but then, you know, looking at it, his state his statement is that you know we're using the first floor for storage in the office. You know, there's is clearly a kitchen, dining, living room space here that ties well with this. Uh, that ties into the second floor as a living space. I mean, that is a living space with a refrigerator, a pantry, and a stove and oven and everything else. Um, so this this will be a very very challenging for me to approve this particular portion of this one, but that's all I guess I have for right now. Mr. Longstaff, do they have the ability, um, Mr. Fisher had alluded to the fact of having like a trader shop or something like that on the facility, would they have any opportunity to have a building like that further in the campground where they could have some of these things stored for people to come and get? Yes, I believe, I believe there is the opportunity to do that. It might, unfortunately, um, it could impact the number of sites that they have. He might have to take up some campsites in order to establish another building in there. There is a central rest facility in there, shower, bathroom facility in there. Um, and I think there's some general storage for yard, for maintenance equipment and things of that nature in that building. Um, and then there's some 70, I believe it was around 70 sites. Correct. Campsites dotted around um, the, the, port, the one of the difficult things is the 
this area, this location, right where they want to do this um, uh, replacement, is in the resource protection district. As you move into the campsite area, as you move out of the resource protection district and into the shoreland overlay, where things are a little more relaxed and you have a little bit more latitude. But as I say, you know, as Mr. Fisher has explained, the way this campground is laid out, you have that entrance road. So you kind of need a gatekeeper somewhere. And I think that's what these buildings basically serve. You know, that's where you sign in, you know, register for, for a tent site and all of that good stuff. So again, it's not our job to redesign. I, I would wonder perhaps if there's something, some way to put a smaller structure that's sort of a, a kiosk where you can maintain, I, I don't know if they have to maintain that 24 seven. I can't imagine that they have to be there at that gate 24 seven, but maybe they do. I don't really understand how, how he wants to operate, but my, my feeling is that perhaps the storage or the store, the general store could be more centrally located in amongst the tent sites or the campsites. Mm -hmm. And there could be a, gate, <coughs> you know, a kiosk mm -hmm. at the gate to do the registering and, and so on and so forth. So maybe, Maybe the general store and residence could be further in while he still has a gatekeeper type office space there. I don't know that that changes anything other than it's a lot easier to site something in, in further into the campground than it is in this resource protection peninsula area that, that they're looking at. I, I guess if I'm the board, I have to, I have to ask those questions to satisfy my understanding of the operation and 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 is is there you know is is there perhaps a, an, an easier way where he can do this but again not not our job to redesign it um, I can't answer all the, it's very difficult to answer all the various scenarios that could be until you have a plan in front of you with a location and everything else because the, the, the site is challenging no matter where you go. It's a little less challenging as you move in. Um, you get out of that resource protection, which is more restrictive. With that being said, if he had like a gatekeeper or something like that, like a shack at the front, would that allow him to apply? I know we're not considering that. We have to consider what's before us. My just question is, if he needed to come back for some reason and he had like a gatekeeper shack or something like that, would he still have to do the same appeal or would he be able to get maybe an alternate appeal if you just had like a small structure um, up there? That's the difficulty. I think, again, anywhere, pretty well, pretty well anywhere on that site, you're in the shoreland zone. Not entirely everywhere, but um, really close to it. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. So as I zoom out, um, the area we're looking at for this variance is right here, uh, the lot. I wish that... I wish this thing wouldn't, oh, yeah, I can move, I can move that, yeah. So um, the out, yellow outlined area is the, the whole parcel. You can see a number of campsites dotted in and mm -hmm. around. Um, the dark green is the resource protection area. The, the underlying zones go from RF to R3 to R4. <laughs> I, think, I think it hits about three different residential mm -hmm. districts in there. So. Uh, campgrounds are, uh, uh, I believe, a permitted use in the RF. It might be, uh, you know, a lot easier to do it in the RF district than it would be in there. And as long as, as long as you're not within the 75 feet of the resource, then you're not as restricted mm -hmm. as to what you can do. And that's why I say maybe, maybe something centrally located mm -hmm. in the campground you still have the, the obvious difficulty of somebody's got to man that, that entrance to the entire campground. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the way the layout is, is kind of presenting the challenge, I think. Yeah. Um, and I just advise fellow members of the board, it's not our job to change this. It's not our job to make what we think it should be. It's our job to approve what's before us and consider it based upon what we have before us. That again, doesn't again, mean that there aren't the, any options, but it's right. not our job. Again, with the existing structures, and I know they, they may be in tough shape, but any, any non-conforming structure can be expanded away from the resource by 30% area and volume. 
maintenance, repair, re even replacement of one wall at a time, that kind of thing could happen. Um, is it going to be easy? No. <laughs> this would be a very challenging thing to take these two manufactured, older manufactured homes and do that with. But the fact still remains, it could be done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can tunnel under the Atlantic Ocean. This, this can be done. <laughs> it's not necessarily going to be easy or inexpensive, but it could be done. And to add on to that real quick, um, you know, yes, that can be done in this case, and the applicant just needs to realize that they're in geographically in a very delicate area that needs careful consideration. And as they move forward, yeah, it's going to be tough, but that's the nature of where their place is. Bishop, did we kind of cover what you were looking to cover beforehand, or do you still have questions on that? No, I think I'm satisfied. Thank you. Uh, point Better of order, B. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I'd, I'd just like to point out again, this is Mr. Manugian, Jesus, Manugian's house. This is where he lives. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like saying, well, you can put up a gate shack and hire somebody. That, that's almost the reverse of, of what this question is all about. It would actually be costing him money to do that. Other than his contracted employees, at the, uh, of which he has several to maintain the grounds and what have you, he's it. He's the employee. He's the guy who does basically everything. He checks people in, he makes sure that they're leaving okay, um, and he's the one that uh, runs the registration desk, and he's the one that sells the few items that he actually has. He can't go anywhere. And as Brian mentioned, and as we see here, this is the only place where this could go. You can't really put a registration desk at the back end of the campground. So yeah, but you could put a home. Beg your pardon? You could put a home in there. Uh, yes, he could put a home back in there, but then if somebody's got an issue and comes out the gate, who's going to man it? Well, right you could, now, you can still have a gatekeeper out there with the, with a gate shack, and he can have his home somewhere inside the campground. But there again, we're talking about almost the opposite of this particular question. If we talk about financial hardship, now we're imposing a hardship by saying move your house. What he wants to do is consolidate the house and the uh, office in, in storage and retail and what have you into one place, significantly reduce the profile from an environmental standpoint, stay where he is to be able to monitor everything, that's, all the comings and goings from the campground which is his business, and that's his only business. So he really needs to stay where he is, and this is by far the best option. As Brian mentioned, you're right, anything is possible. He could actually leave the modular homes where they are right now and rebuild them in place. Um, I know the board doesn't look at economics as far as that's concerned, but that would be just severely uh, economically undesirable, let's put it that way. Um, particularly when, given they don't have foundations, Everything is all public, by the way, all, all utilities. Um, he would be able to, uh, again, reduce the footprint by a considerable amount, almost not quite half, um, and then uh, be in great, much greater compliance with uh, the environmental considerations. As Mike had mentioned, uh, no specific comment. It's sort of a no-brainer. Uh, we do have a, the, the DEP um, permit by rule for this, which is not shoreland, but the DEP did take a look at it and say, yep, this is, you're, you're reducing the impact. There's nothing wrong with that, um, and that's a part of your packet. So is it a difficult question to ask or, or to answer? Absolutely, it always is. But given the impact that he's looking at, uh, I'm afraid if we don't do it, then this business is going to continue to decline, or he certainly feels it's going to, and that's not essentially what we want to be able to have. Well, a couple questions I want to address. You said that we had heard from the state that it was a no-brainer. We didn't hear that. We heard no comment. So they didn't give us a comment, yay or nay, on no, it? No, that, that's the DEP's uh, PBR. It was a no-brainer. Did you have no comment that this was a no-brainer? Well, we have, the, we have the PBR. I which think they what he's no referring to is, is they got a permit by rule from the NERPA folks. Okay. So that's different than the Shoreland Zoning right. Coordinator. Okay. That's what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, I'm referring to the Shoreland Zoning. They didn't give us an opinion one way or another. Right. And, I mean, he's going to have a hardship no matter what happens because you, you said it yourself, the, the structures were built in 1960. They're going to have to be replaced. He's going to have to buy something or do something at some point in time anyways because they're going to fall right. down around themselves at some point in time. So, I mean, he can either look at this and we can consider this based upon this or he can do something else. Like I said, it's not our job to consider something else. But I think he's going to have a hardship no matter what with mobile homes that are built in 1960. That's they're going to have to exactly be replaced right. if they're 50 eight years old, they're going to have to be replaced at some time soon anyway. So I don't think asking him to move his home further inland where it would fit and it would fit into everything is creating more of a hardship because he's going to have to move his home anyways. 
those trailers eventually are not going to be sustainable. I absolutely agree. But if it, let's say theoretically, if he did move the home internally to the campground, he would then have to hire somebody else to do what he does. And therein lies an economic hardship. Is it a huge hardship? I don't know what his financial aspects are right now, other than the fact that it took him 12 years to get to this point and said, I'm now ready to be able to improve my gate, basically, or my, my entranceway. Um, and if we say, you know, you're right, you're going to have to get rid of an office or replace an office at some, in your home at some point, we're going to come back to this board no matter what the situation is, whether it's now or two years from now or five years from now, before they really just kind of give way and he's got no choice. And if we say, well, you know, your option is to move your house in, and he says, well, then I have to hire somebody else to be there 24 hours a day or I, to help us 24 hours a day at the gate, and that's anathema to what this question is all about. I would respectfully disagree with you on that because he could have a shack there and he could have a porta potty brought over. So if he had to use a facility, he could use that. He could still have his house inside the campground and the honor of someone where it would fit better. And with the technology we have, I mean, there's wireless cameras everywhere. If, if you're looking for security in something, there's cameras you can hook up practically anywhere that will show you pictures of everything that's going on anywhere. But with that being said, I'm just going to move on to the next one here. Before we do that, just one point of clarification. The, the way the, the ordinance is arranged and the way it's worded, it doesn't matter, to, in, I guess maybe to Mr. Fisher's point, it doesn't matter what he does with those trailers. There's no conforming location. So even a kiosk would require a variance. My suggestion is, and I, I mention this cautiously because I cannot predict what the ordinance committee or the council will approve, but I've mentioned this before. Our ordinance is not in step with the state guidelines, the minimum shoreline, shoreline guidelines, which would allow a replacement structure if it is moved back to the greatest practical uh, extent or 75 feet, whichever comes first. And, and that is a decision made by the planning board, not the zoning board. Okay. Uh, I'm working to update our, our shoreland zoning, zoning ordinance in a number of areas anyway. There's a number of areas that the new guidelines address that we don't. And, and so in doing that, I would be proposing that we follow the state guidelines to try to do away from, to Mr. Blaze's point, where the ordinance is forcing him into a mm -hmm. non conforming situation. It, it's non conforming anyway, but the difference is if you had the state guidelines, you would be able to replace those structures without a variance. You would only have to demonstrate that you're moving the structure back to the greatest practical extent and you're not increasing the size, which is essentially what he's trying to do here. Exactly. The difference is our ordinance is more restrictive than the state's guidelines, which it can be by, by, um, uh, by, by statute. We, we have that right. But it, it places an additional difficulty on the applicant because there is nowhere to turn for an easy answer. You have to go for a variance. So, so again, At this point, we have to consider what is here. We have to consider what is here. But, but I offer that, that in, within maybe perhaps a year's time, this might not be the situation, and he could do exactly what he's asking to do. And I just put that out there. Mm -hmm. I can't guarantee that, mm -hmm. but that's another alternative. Mr. Blaze asked, you know, what can he do? Could wait and see. <laughs> wait and see, and then wouldn't have this problem. He'd be taking a risk, um, but if it turns out that the council does not approve the proposed amendments and they want to keep that, that uh, that difficulty in there, then he can come back and, 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 and roll the dice again, I guess is you know, the way it would work. Well, I commend the town for looking at things to try to help people. That's, that's where we are, we're at, and again, I can't promise anything, yep. but that's what I, I hope to do. Thank you for that. Uh, the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Mr. Blaze, do you want to? <laughs> I don't see it. Changing anything down there. Actually, it'd probably make it look nicer, but that's neither here nor there. I would agree. I mean, I would think, you know, despite the the proposed use of the facility, it wouldn't alter any essential character of the neighborhood. It would probably improve it in some degree. I agree. Yeah, I would agree with my fellow board members. This is the one that is pretty much easy for us. I mean, from what we've seen for a picture, structurally wise and 
visually wise, it would improve the character, as opposed to two trailers down there. So this is one I definitely have no problem with. Any other questions? Um, the hardship is not a result is not a result of action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. It's before zoning. Well, yeah. It is before zoning, so. It's before zoning, but he purchased it in 2006. Am I correct? So he purchased it in 2006. These, these mobile homes were there well before. No, zoning. for sure, but, you know, him purchasing it, realizing that or maybe he didn't at the time, but the location of those facilities next to the hazard, is that? Well, that's a, that's a great point. I don't want to take up too much time, but, but um, the court has ruled that even having prior knowledge does not necessarily mean that you, you took an action. So, so they, whether you, just because you bought it, mm -hmm. knowing that those buildings were close to the water, doesn't necessarily mean that you understood everything that that okay. entailed. Uh, and I enough. think from what Mr. Fisher's told us, basically he didn't really realize a lot of this until he started looking into it. So sure, and I that's would, and that's fine. I, I'm, then I have no issues with this. It's a, it's a valid point, but I, I, I can offer that. Okay, I'd like to open it up for the public hearing. Anybody here wishing to speak on the public on this matter? No one's getting up. <laughs> Close the public hearing. Let's go down through the questions. We kind of went down through them anyways. We had questions. Let's just go down through with some finding the fact and vote yes or no on them. Before we do that, I will advise, you've probably been getting an impression right now, Mr. Longstaff has given you a little bit of a possibility of something that may happen. I don't know where you're standing as to you want us to vote on this or not, because it will lock you up for how long before they can apply again? You can't come back with the same proposal within a year. So, um, if we, if you go through the board and take the initial polls, as it were, um, that would be beneficial. Um, I'll be very honest. If it looks like it's going to be a no vote and a two to two or or, or less than that, obviously we prefer to table, um, but because we need, Mr. Minogren is out of the country right now on a family issue, otherwise he would have been here this evening. Um, but uh, we can certainly speak to him then. I don't really see that that's necessary, but I'm not voting on the board. So uh, I understand that question. The first question is a tough one, but we've got Scarborough's trying to attract businesses and we want to be able to help them. And this is a business that's been here for 60 years and it's kind of going the other direction for whatever reason. And I can't explain that, but um, this is the point at which he says, I need to improve this because I'm losing customers. I don't think we're looking to table this, correct? Um, it would just be a withdrawal or a vote. In, unless there have been other scenarios that you've discussed with the owner, I don't know that tabling is going to do yeah, any good. I don't see any, any reason to um, it might, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's a, I, I haven't had those conversations, so I don't know. I would concur with Mr. Longstaff. I think tabling it is not something we would be doing. It would either be a no vote or a yes vote, or it would be come back with a different proposal. If you think that tabling would allow you time to talk to the owner and come back with a different, <laughs> a different proposal, then tabling would, would work. But if that's not something that you feel he's going to be receptive to, then I don't see that tabling is going to do anything. Um, I, would, I would think it would have to be substantially different too. Right, we didn't we didn't really discuss any of that. It didn't uh, given the basically the significant improvements that we thought this site was going to that this action was going to do for this site. We didn't really think it was going to be that much of a problem. Um, so toward that end, yes, I mean I would like to be able to have the board, uh, I guess, uh, go through and, and vote on this because we'd love to be able to get it. And, uh, uh, he will be back hopefully in about two weeks. And, okay, uh, so you want us to vote that. yes or no? Yes, please. Okay, understanding the fact that if we do, do do a complete vote, you can't come back for a year. Well, if it, with the same proposal. With the same proposal. Right, so. Okay, I'm just making sure that we're all clear. Okay. Number one, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. We're doing findings of fact. And yeah, then, but didn't we just do this? We went down through questions, actually. We, we kind of did questions, but I don't know. 
I pass on this one. Um, I don't think that. I mean, I, I, I don't agree with that they're able to. Um, apologies. Um, I think it still can yield a reasonable return as, the, you know, there's other things that they can do to this property. The plan is presented right now. I can't. Um, the description of the property and the application and the plan that is proposed to us in front of me right now, they're, to me, they're different and I can't agree with them. Uh, to me, the answers that you've provided tonight sort of seem around your your client's need for a maximum return. I mean, he's got a successful business that is running there, and he's being successful, and he's looking for more ways to maximize his return at this point. I think there are many things available to him, and this is just his need to try to, I understand, try to improve his business. but. Under this thing, you know, this doesn't a reasonable return. I, this feels like a maximum return to me. I can only tell you what he said. Yep. You know, he said he's losing business. He's not trying to get more. Can't get any more. He's only got. Well, he's not adding sites. any new sites, so he's just trying to improve. I guess what's there, and um, that's how I feel. Um, I would concur with what I've heard from the fellow board members. Um, it can yield reasonable return. There's other options. It's not our job to consider them. There are other options that could be presented. There's other things that could be done. It's a business that's viable. People are still coming. I mean, people still come there every year and they still ask for the things to be brought to them. So it's definitely a business that's able to be able to survive without us doing this specific thing to um, improve the property, I guess. All in favor of A, B, and Met? All opposed? Unanimous. Need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition of the neighborhood. We're just trying to find you with that. <laughs> need, for, need for the variance is really due to the uh, the ordinance. Yeah, it's due to the unique circumstances of the property. There's no doubt about that. I agree with that. Yeah, I, it's as been clearly displayed tonight. It's uh, proximity to the water hazard, all the environmental considerations for it, the fact that they really can't really build anything on that parcel that they're on right now. Well, I mean, this is a unique property here in the Shoreland Zone, and I think we've discussed at length how much difficulty you're facing here. Yeah, I, I would concur. I think it's a unique circumstance of the property, um, imposed or not imposed by the town. Um, but it is a unique circumstance. I wish we had gotten something better back than a no comment and then additional comments from the DEP to help us understand maybe what they're looking for of this and maybe asking Scarborough to make their guidelines in more conformance with what they offer, like Mr. Longstaff, Longstaff has suggested that's being looked at. And hopefully the council will consider that and uh, help people in some of these things too hopefully make that part of the ordinance match what the state's is. So all in favor of B being met? It's unanimous. C, the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality? That's for sure. <laughs> I'm not going to change anything. No. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, I mean, I think any kind of improvement to here will be an improvement to the surrounding units and neighborhood and area. Right, I don't think so any change well I think the change would be positive for whatever goes there I mean when these trailers do finally fall apart and something has to go there I think it will definitely be an essential character of the locality that will be improved so I think what we're seeing looks great I mean it's going to improve the character of the neighborhood and the locality all in favor of C being met to be honest D, the hardship is not a result or action taken by the applicant or prior owner. There again, I mean, everything was fine and dandy until or, uh, the ordinance came along. So, I'm going to say it's not his fault. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, as, uh, as Mr. Longstead pointed out, you know, the courts have determined that you know, just by purchasing the property doesn't make the 
the hardship your fault. Sure. Right, the hardship is the location being within the shoreline zone and the resource there. Yeah, and I honestly believe what you're telling Mr. Fisher is he obviously didn't realize what he was up against with this when he purchased the property. Um, probably would have made some more comments to his realtor or more questions of the realtor for things. And I, I do, I've said this numerous times in these meetings, is if you're purchasing a property, ask your realtor to give you some information about it and what might be a, a hindrance or something going forward. It's just, it's only helping the client if the people can know what a potential thing like this could be going forward once they purchase the property. And I would encourage people to ask your realtors whatever questions you can if you're purchasing a commercial property because you need to be informed of what can and cannot happen there. All in favor of DB and MIP? It's unanimous. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve appeal number 2649 as presented. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Off the record? Yes. Are we off the record? I just need to ask that if you had mentioned they were right, at some point these trailer homes, not even homes, call them what they will, they're 60 years old, they're going to be built up and they're going to go. You can't run a business like this from anywhere else in the campground. Yes, you could live somewhere else, but you can't run a business like that. So something's going to go to replace that in this particular area. It has to in order to keep this business going. Otherwise, the business goes down to the point of potential folding. So if we're going to do it now or it's going to happen later, but we still have to come back to the board. And as Brian mentioned, you know, the zoning changes may end up changing, but they may not. So what's the difference in time? How are we going to get through something where there's obviously going to be a demise to the business in terms of economic return? We have to come back to the Zoning Board of Appeals at some point. Do we, I'm being facetious, obviously, but do we let the buildings collapse before that happens? I, think I would get an attorney. I mean, we just went to training, and they're telling us variance appeals are, you have a property, you don't need a building on it. He has a return. He's running a business there. He's making money. He can stand there on his two feet and collect fees, and he still has a viable property. I mean, we, we're going training, and they're, they're quoting some specific case specifically, and this case says you can have a field if you have a reasonable return. I would get an attorney. And I think to that, to that note, too, I mean, I would encourage your client to become active when the planning board is going over some of these things and, and maybe talk to the council and give them the information as to what Mr. Longstaff has given tonight. I mean, encourage him to be proactive and you yourself could be proactive with the council and say, hey, is something like this going to be able to happen so that this person can do this? And if it's able to happen, I mean, people get things done by being active on it. And I mean, I think if he's proactive and you're proactive, Something may be able to get done. The council hears no, about enough people that are coming before them and saying, well, this sh really should match what the state has. Maybe it's something the council will say, okay, we, we really feel that it should, and hopefully it will change. But I would encourage proactivity on this. Well, that's, that's certainly something yeah. we can absolutely do yeah. on this project, that's on any project. It just comes back to some of the conversations we've had before where what is reasonable? To an attorney, to head, to me, reasonable could be a different thing. And we're talking about somebody where, in not just this particular case, but this is their livelihood. And we're saying, gee, sorry, you know, everything is grandfathered basically, but because of a regulation that really shouldn't apply in one respect because you're making everything better, we're not going to give it to you anyway because of a reasonable, subjectively interpreted return. Okay. Well, Maine Municipal Association is very diligent and very to the fact on this as to what a reasonable return can be. And I mean, he purchased the property. That's why I said, I would encourage people that are purchasing per commercial properties, whether it be Scarborough or any place else, talk to your realtor, talk to who you're buying the property from and find out, is this gonna cause me a hardship down the road if I look to do this? I mean, if you're buying a property and you know it's got two mobile homes or modular homes that have been there since 1960, you know at some point they're gonna fall down or they're gonna come apart. If you're not having that conversation with your realtor or if your realtor's not having that conversation with you, I, I think it's something that has to happen because you're purchasing a property. You can look at the property when you're purchasing it and look at these trailers and know that something's going to happen. I used to do insurance. We wouldn't cover modular or mobile homes that were past a certain age because they would essentially become worthless at a certain time. If you're purchasing a property that has something like that on there, you got to ask the realtor and you got to ask people like yourself that know what's going on in town 
is this something I can do and what type of hardships am I going to be up against? And then maybe they don't purchase it. I, I completely understand. You and I are sort of in the same area. We have been sort of in the same industry as far as that's concerned. Yeah. There are certain people who would absolutely go to that as their first question. Most people have no clue. They see what they're looking at. Do they buy it through a realtor? Maybe they don't. Does the realtor, is it really forthright with everything? Maybe not. Yeah. Certainly a lot of people who are experts at tax may not have any clue about what, what is why. So I understand what you're saying, and I absolutely agree with it, but most people don't have a clue about it. If I can add to that just real quick, you know, say for instance you have an application and the applicant is saying, yes, I want to live in this building and I also want to sell or offer goods for sale here. Um, I would say to that applicant for whatever project that is, or whatever application that is, generally speaking, that show a space here where you can reasonably sell material and show exactly what you're going to have in there, generally speaking, and show where it can go. I think that would be something that's more tangible to see it than looking at a building that's basically a residence only. I absolutely agree with that as well. Keep turning there. I agree. Yeah. We have to go by what what we're given. Okay. Thank you. Um, I appreciated the all boards meeting that we had a couple of weeks back, was it, or last week? <laughs> it all rolls together. I appreciated that everybody from this board was in attendance. That was very great to see that yeah. all of our members were there. That was impressive. That was very impressive. So I really appreciate you folks backing the town up and backing us up by going to that and speaking up and, and talking about the new changes to a comprehensive plan and trying to educate ourselves and probably try to ask pertinent questions of the town as to if we do this, what's this going to affect this? So you folks had a lot of great questions. And I think it was a very viable meeting. I thought a lot of information came out of it. There were a lot of folks there from different entities. Project Race was there, and um, this, I believe the senior population had some representatives there. The library had some representatives. So there was a lot of different entities that were there. The school board was there. So a lot of people talked about what they wanted and what they wanted to see. So I applaud everybody for doing that, and everybody that went. It was definitely worth the information and gaining knowledge. So I really appreciate all the work that did come. Uh, we do have two new board members that are going to be here next month. I believe so. Okay. I think that's the plan. <laughs> okay. One of them did come to our joint planning board slash zoning board meeting we had last month, I believe. Yes. Okay. And I believe we're full <laughs> at this point. We will be as soon as those two appointees are, are appointed. We will have a full board. And awesome. we do have a new person coming in. At least until January. <laughs> we do have a new person that has been put in Karen's position that will be starting with us yes. possibly by next We will month. have a, a, a lady by the name of Doreen Creest. She will be starting her first day with Scarborough on the 17th of September, Monday. And um, so, yes, yeah, she should be in place. Thank, thank you, Tracy, for your filling in. Thank you very uh, much. Karen. Thank you. Hey, we appreciate uh, you bearing with us. <laughs> not a problem. We have a new, we have two new, we'll have two new people. We have a new CEO. Uh, gentleman by the name of John Lotfi. Um, he's on board. Uh, Mark Mitchell has gone to Elliott, so he's replacing Mark. And so we have, we'll have a lot of new faces downstairs. So. And one more in December. <laughs> yeah, uh, <coughs> welcoming the new folks into town. We really appreciate you coming to Scarborough and working with us. And we look forward to working with all of you going forward. Does anybody else have any other comments? Thank you very much for filling in. Wonderful job. I just wanted to wish Leroy luck on his run for school board. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Let's put his name in there. I wish you luck, Leroy. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. I would appreciate all of your support. You got it. No other comments? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice evening. Thanks for hanging out. Ha, 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 ha.